I've been here for past two times. The first time was 2016 May. Next time after that was 2017 May, Q2 this year, and now we are in Q4 2017. And I thought uh, I use this opportunity to take you through some of the movements and developments a digital health company went through and how we started from wards and hospitals and we are now doing a little bit more general stuff. Uh, before I get into the details, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about what we do uh, for the people that they don't know. I heard lots of people talked about us yesterday, but I'd like to give you an overview of uh, what Medipad is all about and what, in general, digital health technology companies, and we are just one example of those companies, they're all about. In the case of Medipad, what we do is very simple. We have the applications on the left side, which is for patients or end users, uh, with some functionalities, modules, that enable the patients to collect some information about themselves. Some of the data can come from variables, blood pressures, temperature measurement, automatically, and some information can come from the patient's interactions, symptom reporting, medication tracker, or validated prompts for their quality of life. And all these data, in a very simple way, goes to the clinical team, could be a nurse, could be a doctor, could be a care provider, and then based on this data, they can make a decisions and assessments, whether this patient's condition is stable, whether this patient is deteriorating, whether uh, we need to ask the patients to come earlier for their appointment to the hospitals before some complications happen, or whether the patient is doing just fine and they don't need to come to the hospital. And that's kind of like where we operate. And, and in that space, we are more focused on rare diseases and high cost chronic diseases, that's kind of like where we started initially. To tell you how we do it, I would like to start with the journey of like where we started for the first disease. The first project we did was at King's uh, NHS Trust around patient monitoring for cancer patients. It was a very small pilot in a way. And the idea was as a patient, you go through chemotherapy, expensive treatment, and lots of things can go wrong and how you can use technology to have a visibility on the patient care while they're not in the hospital and spend their time at home. And we put together something very simple, a couple of modules uh, for measuring toxicity of the treatment, temperature, which correlates sometimes with infection, and some quality of life questionnaires to ensure that if you do the chemotherapy, you don't like make the patient miserable. And sometimes easily patients, they get overdosed and, and they will have a very bad quality of life. And also from the patient side, you have cancer for the first time in your life. It's, it's not a good place to be. And you go home, you, you have nobody. And, and having a center, something, a device that can help you to navigate at least, to learn about your disease, to be able to communicate, it's like having a GPS when you go to a new city, to a new country. Without that, you will feel lost. And that was kind of like where we brought, what we brought to the patients. That project turned out to be a success. The patients liked it. And then we started working with other NHS trust. And in parallel to that, we started getting feedbacks from other clinicians, Parkinson's, neurologists, uh, cardiologists, that, OK, this is really cool. We want to have similar things for our cohort of patients. Again, very focused on high cost chronic disease patients. That's kind of where we started and we focused. And then slowly we started building more modules. You see on the left side, you know, things such as double tapping, you know, six minutes walk test, uh, different type of uh, interactions and data collections from the patient side. In the middle, connecting to more devices. Some cardiologists, they wanted to have weight measurement, blood pressures, which I think um, we have Chelvis team uh, presenting yesterday. And then slowly we added more and more devices to the extent that we are looking into now integrating to insulin pumps uh, and, and more medical uh, devices. And then this way, depending to the disease, 
we kind of go to the clinicians, to the hospitals and say, okay, what do you want for your cohort of patients? And each disease area, they say, okay, I want these three modules from the left side. Maybe I need two data fit from the devices automatically coming and we configure it. And in a matter of usually hours or sometimes days, we can at least to come up with the first version so they can start using it. And that's kind of the whole uniqueness of our technology, you can do things very quickly, and hence why we managed to get a good traction within rare diseases and high cost uh, diseases to be able to configure each solution toward what the clinicians, what that hospitals needs. And to share examples of our, our life, we have had scenarios, two hospitals in London, literally like 10 minutes from each other, looking after the same cohort of patients, but one thing, different modules, Every clinician, every hospital, uh, they do things a little bit different. And on the educational side and content, again, we are very much working with the trust and hospitals to make sure that we put the contents they want. And as a result of that, after you know, cancer, we added Parkinson's, cardiology solutions, et cetera, and more and more. And after like 10 therapeutics area, it became like much easier because we didn't need to build new things as much as we used to. Uh, when you get to the point of like 100 modules, uh, pretty much you can cover majority of the client's needs uh, with the current uh, functionalities we have built. Sometimes here and there we ended up adding stuff and this is a continuous uh, uh, development but we more now focus on configuring new solutions rather than building new modules. To take you through some of the projects we are doing, uh, uh, as mentioned, we started with hospitals. Until end of 2016, we were only working with hospitals, uh, mainly NHS Trust uh, in London, and then we expanded to Germany, US, China. Uh, and on the back of working with the top teaching hospitals in the world, we kind of got linked and introduced to pharmaceutical companies, and they heard about what we are doing. And, and through the leading clinicians, they, they learned the impact of these kind of technology. And as a part of that, we have now work and collaborations with biggest pharmaceuticals as well, Johnson Johnson's, Boston Scientific. We signed a global contract with them for one of their brands, uh, uh, Novartis, Bayer Pharmaceutical, and we work with them. And they use our technology either to complement their drug offerings uh, as a companion app or use it as a part of the drug trial or coming up with a ways that they can support hospitals to ensure patients they take the drugs in the right way as a part of the treatments but also ensure that if there is there need to be an upgrade for the treatment the doctors nurses they have a full visibility so you do things at the right time uh, and that makes a big difference and that has been always missing. You know, sometimes you start prescribing drugs that, uh, I'm talking about very expensive drugs that can cost 50K per year, 100K per year per patient, and, and patients, they don't take it in a, at the right time, in the right way, or sometimes you need to change the drug and there is a delay for, for, for the clinicians and, and nursing team to, to visit and see the patient so that they can do the upgrade, and now you can do everything through uh, having this connected care in a simple way and ultimately it benefits the patients. It creates a win-win for hospitals because if you provide the right treatment, it means you will hopefully have less complications so the patient will not end up in A&E uh, with some sort of complication. Uh, and that's kind of like how we started engaging with pharma as a part of the second pillar of like healthcare ecosystem. You have the hospitals, you have the pharmaceuticals. But something really interesting uh, started to, to happen for our company in, the in 2017, which is in a way emotional because when we started, and I'm gonna show you our timeline of our life, people, lots of people, told us what you guys are doing literally impossible and not one hospital will work with you. And I know it for good reasons, they told us, because it's really hard. Uh, uh, for a company to survive in, this, uh, in the healthcare space. But we are very proud now because not only we have managed to sign uh, hospitals departments that we work with now, the top ones, we, we have signed countries. Uh, uh, the, the latest country we signed is Singapore. Uh, we signed a deal with Singapore government as a part of our collaboration with Johnson Johnson 
for high cost diabetes patients monitoring across the country. The first phase will be small, but again, the whole vision is to scale it across every high cost diabetes patients in the country. And the idea is we can scale that in other countries that we already have conversations, uh, or sometimes you might target cities uh, uh, that, that makes sense. And, and that's, I think, a, a big change. For a small company that was struggling even to sell to hospitals, departments, to be able to do national deals in that scale, uh, it's, it's, it shows that digital health is becoming slowly uh, reality uh, between, between decision makers in, in highest levels. And, and I think that's good for everyone. It's good for the patients, good for the healthcare provider, and also it's very good for government because you will end up saving lots of uh, money. Another big thing that happened, and this was always the first things we used to hear in our meetings, you guys using devices and phones and iPads, these are gadgets. And we said, fine, you know, we continued working and pushing what we were doing. Uh, for years, we still got this feedback that this is gadget is not going to get anywhere. Uh, but since 2016 that we started doing more and more projects, people felt, okay, that's cool. Uh, we can see this and we can accept this as a service improvement. And we, even today, when we go to hospitals or pharmaceuticals, we don't claim anything that this will, you know, uh, is a magical tool or anything. We say this will improve the services that you are providing. It makes things a little bit better. It makes the whole connectivity and, 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 and care for the patients a little bit better. But what happened in the past six to nine months, some of the deployments we did last year, you know, they started using it, uh, patients used it, clinical teams and people research, they started analyzing and getting feedbacks from patients, clinicians, they did some publications, and two of our deployments now, they got status of standard of care. It is, from our perspective, the biggest achievement a company like us could have achieved because a tool that used to be gadget and potentially in the best case scenario service improvement now, it seems it's becoming a standard of care. And what it means that you take your drugs or you get a chemotherapy as a standard of care for your cancer, then you need some sort of technology. And it doesn't need to be Medipad. It could be any technology that can achieve that kind of status as a part of your care. And, and, and that's what we always wanted. This is, I think, what every digital health company always wanted to achieve. And, and for us, this was, uh, I remember this, we got an email in April, June uh, this year, first email that they said, okay, we're gonna use this standard care. We, we were the happiest uh, in, in our company. Although it didn't have any financial benefit or anything for us, uh, but that was kind of showing that the world is changing. I see digital health companies and technologies like, a, like a trees. You know, you, put, you need to put the seed, you know, slowly grow, water it, slowly, until they start uh, adding real value and, and, and give fruits uh, to the people. And that was one of the milestones. I guess this was, from our perspective, when the trees starts having flowers before you, get, you see the, the fruits. Now I want to show you uh, the first deployments we did because uh, until today, I'm still like, impressed with the impact that that first deployment, the first patient uh, had uh, on our thinking. And, and this video is a very short video, but it tells a lot in my view. Well, I think it's great because you haven't got to wait to come for the appointment because it, it contacts the doctor straight away if they need to change the medication. Then I thought, well, will I be able to use this technology? Because I'm not used to using it. Um, but since having it, it's made me feel a lot more confident and I feel very, very calm about it and I'm very pleased about it. To quickly show you some of the examples that you get a sense of what we do in different verticals, 
This is a hospital example. Uh, this one is for cancer treatment, pediatric oncology patients. Uh, as you can see on the left side, there are like some functionalities like such as medication tracker, log your symptoms, quality of life questionnaires, such as, you know, this is for kids, like whether they have attended the schools or what is the score of the, uh, their quality of life, and a video. And although the functionality looks very simple, it does something very important. Uh, these kids, they have this, uh, chem the chemo drugs goes to their brains and mess up with their motor function. And depending how they can walk uh, post, the, post the chemotherapy, you know, one week after, they, they decide whether you know, they need to adjust the treatment. And at the moment, you need to get the kid back and a doctor sits and a nurse sits and they watch the kids going back and forth walking to see, okay, whether they put too much or too little. Uh, and now, we added a like, super simple, it's just obvious, like a module is called video. Moms take a video of the kid after chemotherapy at, at, the, at, the, at the comfort of the kid's home and they just send it to the clinical team and they have the records and they can watch it and see, okay, the, the kid is just doing fine, the chemotherapy dosage was fine, uh, the quality of life is fine, and, 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 and you don't need to get the kid coming back and forth. And again, uh, what, the reason I'm, I'm really excited about this uh, uh, functionalities because sometimes we feel we need to do magical things for healthcare. Healthcare needs are very simple and, and they need like very simple functionalities. The next one uh, I want to show you, this one is also very cool. Uh, we did it with Johnson Johnson uh, Actelion Division. Uh, this is at Royal Free at the moment and the project. Uh, this is a good example of win-win-win situation. Pharma wins, hospital wins, also patients win, uh, and we are happy. Uh, for them, what we did, this is a PAH patient, pulmonary arterial hypertension patients. This is not a common disease. Uh, I think we have five thousands of those that they get this treatment uh, in the UK, and Royal Free is one of the center of excellence. We have few, five <coughs> across the UK patients. Sometimes they have to travel every three months maybe three hours, four hours until they get for the checkup. And their checkups is usually very simple. They need to fill a form on a paper. They need to do a six minute walk test uh, so that people, you know, it's part of their, their, their measurements. And then some vital signs being collected, you know, blood pressures, heart rate, that kind of stuff. And, and, and because you cannot get the patients to come, you know, always at the right time, they have these fixed schedules. But, people's body is not fixed, you know, you cannot like monitor somebody on a weekly or monthly or quarterly basis and assume that you can give them the best care they need. Uh, through this, Actelian said, okay, we're going to provide the technology as a part of our treatment. We are providing the drug, we cover that uh, as a part of the technology, the tech we cover the technology. And now patients, they can, they do and they can do on, once a month. They, re they do their six minute walk test, they report the quality of life scores that they have, and then the scores can be graphed. And once a month, nurse, nurse thinking, they look at all the patients, and if they see somebody has dropped their six minute walk test by 20%, or whatever factor that they wanted, we can alert them and say, okay, these patients might need more attention. And then based on the data, the dashboard they see, they say, okay, you and you and you, maybe we need to see you earlier because it seems your condition is deteriorating faster than we expected. And this way, if needed, they can upgrade the treatment in a matter of like minutes. If not, they just get the patients to come to the hospital for further checkup. And if a patient looks good, you're fine. You don't need to come every three months. Come like three months later. And, and something as simple as that, ultimately it helps the hospitals to have less patients with complications showing up and some of these complications could be even life-threatening. So it's not only about you know, quality of life or quality of care. Sometimes it's about their, their, their life. Uh, and, and the pharmaceuticals are happy as well because if you start upgrading the drugs earlier, they will end up making more profit. And if patients are using their drugs and things are working, so they are happy. And the patients also are happy because they don't need to always come back and forth. These diseases, they're like, this is not like a, you know you get a cold or you break your foot. This, this is people struggle. People they know they're gonna die at some point with that disease. You cannot cure it 100%. And the last thing you want for them is just to go home, 
and have no connectivity to any clinical team, care team, uh, feeling alone. And that's the worst thing. And I think that's one of the drivers of what uh, our, our patients really like. Another example which I mentioned, this is Singapore government uh, national deal. Again, simple for diabetes, uh, high cost diabetes patients, you can do some data collection. Data goes to, to the hospitals. This is a very new project. We won it like a month ago roughly. So we haven't gone live, but that's kind of how it looks like. And the idea is on back of these projects, we're gonna do more projects with them. And that's, that this has been our trend, you know. We started with one trust, you know, doing one project, small one, and then six months later, usually they subscribe to four or five more diseases, and six months later, another five, 10. And same goes with government. We started with these guys uh, for diabetes, but now we are discussing a rare disease uh, national platform to cover a major rare disease in the region. Another example that a little bit uh, unusual to what we do is uh, Volkswagen. Uh, and I'll, it's unusual because if you would have talked to me three months ago and you would have asked me then, will you guys end up working with uh, uh, Volkswagen Group, I would have told you, no way, I cannot even imagine myself. But now we sign a contract with them to monitor the health of their truck drivers. Again, we do things in life, and sometimes some of the jobs and, and conditions that we are, we are doing it on a daily basis, like a driving a truck, it's deteriorating for your body. It kills you slowly. And they wanted to do something about it. And again, it doesn't need to be complicated. What this app does, it measures the activity of the drivers. It has some self-assessments that you push us to the driver every six months for diabetes. Uh, and this self-assessment is something that we use NHS Choices. It's not, we didn't even need to invent it. It's already there. Uh, and, and the key there is these drivers, they're more in tune to get these kind of diseases. And then you can do every six months a self-assessment. And if you see you have a high risk, then you might get an alert that it might be a good idea to go for a proper checkup to the clinical team of the hospitals that covers you. Uh, and then here you can see on the, the second one, uh, it reminds the drivers, if it sees that you have been driving for many hours, you need to do this stretch or you need to do this exercise. Whether drivers they do it or not is up to them. And I don't expect all the drivers in the world now start using it. But even if you get 5%, even if you get 10%, that's still a big impact. And slowly it will get bigger and bigger. And again, that's like how, uh, a digital health company that was in the hospitals, we never thought about you know, this space uh, ever, started now influencing things out, outside of the hospitals uh, with the similar things we have built for the hospitals. And that's the beauty of a uh, hospital. Uh, when you build something for complicated secondary care setup, it seems from what we are observing, it works in lots of other use cases. And that's why uh, I started my uh, conversation and this talk with the tagline of, you know, uh, from the word to the word, because we were, until 2016, very much focused on doing things mainly for rare diseases, which are even more complicated cohort of patients, working with different departments, different hospitals in the UK and outside of the UK, the top ones. And on the back of that knowledge, on the back of that building things to be able to address the needs of uh, the cohort that we were covering, you know, hundreds of modules, we, 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 we managed to be able to uh, cover more and more and we managed to get more uh, trust from the, from the society, you know. People trust you when you start working with hospitals. And on the back of that, we got the good traction from pharmaceuticals, you know, working on different projects in different capacities. And on the back of that, governments, they got interested because we were working with hospitals and pharma, the biggest uh, cost centers for every government from the healthcare providers so, or insurance companies, as an example. But now, we are working with football clubs, sport teams. They want to use the same technology. Everything we do is just one app. It's just configured with those hundreds of modules that we have developed it. Uh, for that use case. Now we have football clubs that one thing using this kind of technology to monitor the health of the football players or tennis players. Or Volkswagen Group or even companies now, they're looking into using and leveraging 
uh, some of the tech we have for monitoring their health. And sometimes, uh, give an example, with Regis Group, it's a property uh, company, and they do, you know, they build the offices and they lease offices and they wanted to come up with a package for all their members to promote healthy living and, and some self-assessments being integrated as a part of their service. And I told them, look guys, we, we, we have no clue about your space. And Mark is the founder of the company and I was having dinner with him and he told, no, 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 I like you guys because you guys uh, work with hospitals, we trust you. We like to work with technology companies that they understand health, they understand uh, the medicine. So that's kind of like the journey we went from like being in teaching hospitals only to now having some interfaces uh, with, with uh, users outside of the healthcare, normal healthcare setup. Looking backward, this is a very important slide for us. Uh, this is kind of the company timeline, Metapad. As you can see, 2012 and 13 when we started, nothing has happened there. It's not because we were not working or we were only chilling. We were really trying to push things uh, into, into the hospitals, but it was very hard. We kind of got lucky. Uh, BMI Healthcare, they wanted to do a pilot with us uh, through uh, their CEO back then, uh, Steve, Stephen Collier. He somehow heard about us. We started our first engagement. And on the back of that, uh, we managed to get uh, you know, a collaboration with a major teaching hospital, which changed our, our life. And this is, uh, the credit goes really to Sean, which I think he did a presentation yesterday. Uh, without what Sean and his team did with us, we would never have the credibility to do the more things that we ended up doing. And why this is important is because in our life, we needed one person to trust us the way that Sean and Royal Free trusted us to do work with us. And that one uh, belief, that one trust, enabled us on the back of that to get more and more projects. Uh, and, and, and this is something that I want to expect everyone in this, in this, uh, in this conference. If you see a good company, uh, they're doing good things and you think this is like a right approach, just take the risk and work with them because it might make a big difference in long term. And on the back of uh, Royal Free Success, uh, we ended up partnering with Apple uh, in, a, in a big way, and then we ended up having more tractions, you know, in the UK and outside. And then this is Q2 2017, which I did my previous uh, talk in the same conference. So we ended up having more partners as well as a lot more clients. But then, just in six months since then, so my tech. Okay. This is just six months. So again, to, to summarize the previous slide, what I really want all of you guys to think about, support digital host companies that you really like. Even if there are two people in garage, five people in a, in a, in a basement, doesn't matter. If you think they are like committed to the cause that they are, they're working, because believe and support of people like Sean. If Sean wouldn't have worked with us, we wouldn't have worked with Apple. Uh, and if we wouldn't have worked with Apple, we wouldn't manage to get all the things that we got through that partnership. Uh, you only need one person or two, per, two, two, two person uh, to, to make a very big difference for, for, for a company. And, and that's kind of like what we went through uh, as, as, as Metapad. And, and as our part of our commitment, and before I finish, I want to share one more thing with you guys. Uh, be, these are some of the partners uh, we work with, Apple the first ones, and then we started working with uh, HP. Uh, they, they selected us now as a partner for their population health initiatives globally, and we did a partnership through an accelerator with NHS. Some of the trusts, we work with them on an innovation basis. Baidu of China, which is a Google of China, we do work with them on a number of data analytics capability. Uh, China Resources, which is the second largest pharmaceutical distributor in China, also we have a very close collaborations with them. And, and all these partners, 
they're like our channels. And because we ended up having a very good hospitals working with us, we kind of got the respect and the trust. And through these partners, now we got a global reach. We can access countries globally. If I want to go to Denmark, if I want to go to China, I can, through these partners, I can reach lots of people. And we felt that would be very cool if we can do something with it. And although we always wanted to do this idea that I'm going to share with you, in a couple of years from now, we realized people are picking up even earlier than us, and they're coming to us. So far, everything Metapad has done was Metapad building modules, connecting devices, and then we partner with Apple, and they put a lot of stuff into our technology as well. You know, some of the things that they developed it, now we are leveraging. And that was it. You know, through this, the modules that we together created, we were like managed to cover as many as conditions that we could. But what if? Now that we have the reach, now that we have all these modules, make it open to every company, to every university, to every, everyone that wants to uh, build something cool and put it into our ecosystem and we enable them to be able to make their functionalities, their modules accessible to all the users, all the relationship we have. And, and this was our dream and we thought it's going to happen in 2020, roughly. But now we have signed with Baidu, they developed the robot, medical robot, very similar to you know, some of the companies here, and Babylon and URMD. So we have integrated their technology to us. They wanted to distribute it through our platform. There are some other companies that they have developed something very unique, let's say for Alzheimer detections or for autism. But the modules they have developed by itself is not enough to cut to the hospitals, to cut to become commercial product. And, and also some of these innovators, they're not in the business of being able to sell to the hospitals. We have done that. We have all the ecosystems, all the other modules that can complement these functionalities, these innovations that two people in garage or a big company with lots of research money, they put together. And that's what we are very excited going forward because solving healthcare problems is not one man or one company's job. It requires collaboration of hospitals, pharmaceuticals, government, and lots of brain capacities from universities, entrepreneurs, and, and we want to be one of the enablers. And we won't be the only enablers. There will be lots of other companies pushing it forward. And, and this, is, this is what I want to leave you guys with uh, uh, as, as a thought that we as a company, we are very committed to support any ideas that wants to access and leverage our network that we have built through our partners. But also, uh, from our perspective, if there is anything that we can help, whether it's a pharmaceutical, whether it's a hospital, whether it's like a small company, we are committed to help. And, and, and when I make this commitment here, I want the pharma people and the hospitals that we have here also make a commitment to companies like us, smaller ones, bigger ones, doesn't matter, uh, to support them. Otherwise, we are always in the, you know, this is a good idea, that's a good idea. We never like do anything about it. And we need to do small things, and that one small project will lead to something bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and if you do that, I hope healthcare can catch up with lots of other industries that are way ahead of healthcare in terms of adopting technology the way it is. And, and that's kind of our only dream. With this, I will finish my talk. Thank you.